Not long ago, I compared the least expensive podcasting mic that I could find on Amazon to my Rode pod mic. And in the comments for that video, TKibs14 recommended the Pile PB Mic 78 for $14. Now, my goal isn't to just buy every cheap mic on Amazon, but this one is particularly interesting to me. The newer mic that I used last time does borrow from many existing designs, but ultimately it has its own identity. This mic, on the other hand, is a direct knockoff of the legendary Shure SM57. And I happen to have a Shure SM57 that I bought back in 2005 and it still works and looks like new. Shure has been making these microphones since 1965 and they've proven themselves time and again as being outstanding and reliable and capable of delivering incredibly high quality. But 15 years ago, as a broke college student, it was tough for me to set aside $100 for a microphone. At the time, if there was a good $14 option like this, that would have been a lot easier for me to afford. I'm guessing that 15 years later, that's still the case. And there are a lot of people out there who don't have a $100 budget for a microphone, but $14 is very achievable. So let's check out this pile microphone and see if it's actually a pile. You can lift this up, see the mic itself. Oh look, I left my light in here. And of course, the actual star of the show, the microphone itself, the Pile PD mic, which right away you can see the Pile mic and the Shure are almost identical. So these mics look really similar to one another. The Shure is slightly, ever so slightly taller, but otherwise they're exactly the same. They have what feels like the same metal casing. The Shure definitely is heavier than the Pile mic, but this doesn't feel, it doesn't feel cheap or anything. It feels like a decent microphone. Let's look into that a little bit further. So while I'm setting these up, did you guys hear that Apple is developing a really small iPhone? Yeah, they're calling it the microphone. So we're gonna grab these mic stands. I'm gonna run both of these mics through the Rodecaster Pro with zero effects added and zero equalization added. So they're just gonna be on the standard dynamic mic setting. Right now, of course, you're listening to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which is my standard you know, video microphone. This is the Shure right here that I'm talking into right now. And the thing about this microphone is it's typically used as an instrument microphone. It's not always used for voice. So most commonly you would find it being used for amps, for guitars and bass and whatever, drums, um, wind instruments, basically, you know, any kind of instrument. You go into any music studio, around the world and you're gonna find these things there. It can work as a vocal microphone though. It doesn't have really much of a built-in pop filter. So a lot of the p -p -p plosives really kind of stand out a lot, but they do make a pop filter for it. And if I put that on it, it makes it much more usable as a, as a vocal microphone. So it just, you know, p -p -p plosives, p -p -p plosives. Pop, 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 plosives, pop, 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 plosives. Since these two mics are the same design, this pop filter fits perfectly on the Pile mic as well. Although ironically, since this is the actual Shure branded pop filter, it costs more than this entire microphone itself. So I don't know if you'd actually want to spend the money on that if you're on that much of a budget where you're going for the $14 microphone. It really does work as a vocal mic. When I started my podcast, this was the mic I had. So it was the one that I used when I first got the Rodecaster Pro because I didn't have anything else and it sounded great. And like I said, this specific microphone is 15 years old and it's just a dynamic microphone, so it doesn't require phantom power or any batteries. So much like the Swiss flag, it's a huge plus in my book. And before we jump into testing, these mics look exactly the same. The Shure is the one that's on my left and the Pile is the one that's on my right. Let's put some tape on them just to make it easier. Can you see that? Sure. And here is the Pile microphone. As I'm talking, whichever mic I'm talking into, this is the one that you're hearing. If I'm not talking into either of these, then it's going to be the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, just so we're all on the same page with that. Now, right now I'm using the SM57, and I actually took a break from recording so that I could play around with these mics and kind of get used to the, to the pile and see what it sounds like. And the thing is, I'm really impressed with it. Like, I was kind of expecting it to sound pretty awful, but I think that it's really usable, like shockingly so. So I'm gonna take the pop filter off so that comparison is more direct. This is the SM57, and this is the Pile microphone. Again, both mics with no EQ, no 
added effects or anything like that, just dry straight out of the box, basically. And I think the first thing that you'll notice is that the Pio mic is slightly more trebly. There's a little bit more on the high end there. And there is, I can hear it in my headphones. I don't know if you can hear it as you're watching this video back. They're both set to the same gain setting. So they're both at, um, on the Rodecaster plus 35, that's just to get the signal high enough so you can hear it. There's slightly more hiss on the Pio microphone than the Shure, but not much. I'm kind of impressed with how this mic sounds. It's really clear, pa, 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 pa. Even though it's a little different than the Shure, the Shure is definitely more of a full sound, a richer sound. This one sounds pretty good. And again, this is no equalization, pa, 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 pa. And if I put the pop filter, put the pop filter on, it really helps. And now we've got what I think is actually sounding like a really usable microphone for $14. Now what I can do in the Rodecaster is I can go into this channel for the, the pile microphone and I can add in some of the processing, you know, like I can en enable some bass. So here's straight out of the box and then here's with a little bit of bass enabled. And now if I go between those, here's the pile microphone and the Shure microphone, the sounds are starting to come together a little bit more. And I think that they're matching each other pretty well. I still think that the Shure sounds better out of the box, but it took very little EQ for me to get this $14 microphone to sound like it. In fact, you know, like I said before, if I just go through and turn off all equalization, it's still a really good sounding mic. I like it a lot. Now, one thing I was curious about is I wanted to see if there are any internal differences between these microphones. So I actually took them apart a little bit, not like totally disassembled, but I just sort of unscrewed so you can see inside them. And what I noticed was that right away, the Shure shows a bit more quality in terms of workmanship, but it is also a heavier microphone weighing in at 279 grams, while the Pile microphone weighs in at 184 grams. And part of that is in the Shure, in the base of it, you can kind of see there's this material that's, I don't know what it is, if it's an insulator or if it's sort of just helping improve durability, improve sound, add weight to it, but I think that's where a lot of the weight comes from. You can kind of just also notice inside the Shure microphone, the, the parts and the metals just seem to be crafted a little bit better. It does not mean that the Pile microphone is bad internally at all. Now, since these are mainly used as instrument mics, I think that's a good way to test it out. This is heavy. I got my guitar amp right here. It's real heavy. It's important to remember here, we're just testing the sound of the microphone. We're not judging musical ability, so it's important to be kind. So I'll position each microphone. This amp has one speaker right in the middle of it. There we go, this isn't like a totally scientific test or anything, of course, but they're basically gonna be picking up the same sound from where they're at right now. <laughs> So in the end, while I am really impressed with this Pile microphone, I'm actually a bit torn. And basically, the reason for that is because I've said it before and I've, I'll say it again, it's best to buy once and buy quality, or it's best to buy quality and buy once, because then you know, even though you might have spent a little bit more money, the thing that you spent your money on is going to last forever. The Shure SM57 has that reputation. You know that this is gonna last forever, even though it's $100, which is not pocket change. The Pile microphone, we just don't know what its durability is gonna be, and that's something we're not gonna know just until time goes on. But the thing about this, though, is for $14, you can't go wrong. And if it were me back 15 years ago, and I'm a broke college kid, and I want a microphone to record my guitar, this would be perfect. This would have saved me so much time and so much money and so much stress. So there's definitely a need for this and it's it's a decent microphone overall for sure. <laughs> Speaking of sure, 
the part where I'm really torn is it's one thing to create a good microphone, but it's another to actually develop that good microphone. So while the pile microphone turns out not to be a pile and actually delivers great quality, Shure is the one, they're the company that came up with this design in 1965. And they're the ones that have been producing these microphones. They have the support and the reputation that kind of comes with creating something that has become so good. And I think that that's worth something because anybody can come in and create something based off an existing design, but not everybody can make that original design. It's kind of like playing the guitar. I can play other people's songs and they might sound okay, but that's not the same as being the person that wrote those songs and created them and, and put them out into the world. And I know that that's more of a philosophical point. And if you're just looking at this from a budget perspective, you don't care about the corporation's feelings or whatever, and you just want the best mic you can get for your money. But in the end, I like supporting a company that's gonna be innovative and develop new things and that has that reputation because that's what's gonna create new stuff that other people can then copy and follow. So if you could choose between these two mics and money's not an option, you gotta go with the Shure all the way. If you're on that limited budget for $14, this is an excellent microphone. I actually like it better than the newer microphone that I reviewed in the other video, which was $25. But this one right out of the box sounds a lot better. And I would rather have a couple of these than a couple of these to be totally honest with you. But of course, if you're still looking for which microphone is right for you, here are a couple of my other comparison videos for you to check out. And to me, that's something that sounds like a good idea. Sounds.